City and welcome to the smartest Iowa and the greatest show in all the land. I am your host, Yale Cohn. Today is the first day of spring, so we invited on the show some of the greenest thumb, just, I don't know if that's a word or not, but I'm calling it a word tonight. Some of the folks with the most green thumbs in all of Iowa City, my friends, Jen and Ted Knights. If you introduce them together, please refer to them as the Knight Says. A lot of people <laughs> make that mistake. They're both very, very knowledgeable in all things gardening, growing, agriculture, you name it. Tell us about yourselves. Ted? Uh, my name is Ted Knights. I am a horticulturist or a plant scientist by degree. I've got a degree from Kirkwood and a degree from Upper Iowa. And I have been working in the business for a while, so I'm kind of cheating. And Jen, how about you? Um, well, I am Jen Knights. I work for the University Foundation. I am a garden writer and um, pretty much learned everything I know about gardening and horticulture from my husband, so um, I really have no business being up here, except that it's possible that now the student has become the master. Oh, I, that's a challenge, Ted. It's my understanding you both work together, actually, in gardening and that, and you've also planted, harvested, and grown two lovely children who are here with us this evening, May and Arlo. You may, in fact, even see uh, May <laughs> popping up on your screen there for a little bit. She's a seasonal. She comes around in the yeah. spring. It is the first day of that's spring, right. but apparently nobody told the weather because it's so cold out. When I was walking down here, I saw a bunch of poets from the Writer's Workshop burning their manuscripts on the Ped Mall, oh. and no one was complaining about the secondhand smoke. Maybe that just mm -hmm. has something to do with how they felt about poetry. I don't know. Let us proceed with the game. Ted, first Ready. question is going to you. All right. If spring starts in March, in what month does it end? June. June? June is correct. All right, Jen. It's coming up for you. Spring begins on the vernal equinox, the day when daylight and nighttime are what? Um, they are equal. They in are hours. the same duration. Yes, we will accept that. Ted, what common gardening tool made of a long rubber tube is most often used for irrigation? A long rubber tube? A hose? A hose. I would have never thought of a hose as a, as a tool, though. It seems like a hose is its own universe. All right. He is so smart, my husband. He is. He is. Jen, what common gardening tool made with a single rubber tire is most often used for transportation of heavy loads? Oh, I've got this, Yale. It's a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. It's also what I use to clean my house, which I do once a year in springtime. All right, Ted. Some gardeners like to harvest these tasty seeds from the Hellenius anus, better known as what? And you can feel free to correct my <laughs> pronunciation and all. Yes. Un <laughs> Sunflower. Un Sunflower <laughs> seeds. That is correct. Oh okay, Jen. What legal, where, excuse me, where legal, other gardeners can get seeds for their muffins or bagel from the Papaver somniferum, better known as what flower? Well, um, I know the answer to this because I actually grow them in my yard and it's poppies. Poppies. So Poppies you, and you'll also be expecting a visit from the uh, DEA sometime this yeah. week. So thank you for telling us that on television. <laughs> all right, Ted. Armenian lemon and Kirby are all types of what fruit slash vegetable? Fruit or vegetable? Oh, Armenian lemon? Kirby. Type of vegetable. A fruit? Or vegetable. According to the question, it's fruit slash vegetable. I wanted to call a friend, but I was told I couldn't call my wife. No. I, I have to say I, I give up. Cucumber. Oh. Uh, cucumber. How, how does that work? Some things are fruit if they have a seed, but we think of them as a vegetable because it's a tomato or it's all kinds I, of things. I'm sure Ted could tell you the botanical definition of fruit versus I, vegetable. All I know about vegetables <laughs> is that some of my favorite animals eat a lot of them. <laughs> all right, Jen. Globe, pear, and roma are all, <clears throat> excuse me, are all types of what other fruit slash a vegetable? Um, funny you should mention this, I think, is botanically a fruit. Um, but we all think of it as a vegetable, the tomato. That is correct. All right. Though Garfield and Snagglepuss might like it, what member of the mint family is wildly considered an invasive plant species? Mm. Mint family. 
Garlic mustard? No, we're looking for catnip. Oh. Catfield. Catfield. All right, then, moving along. Though Mr. Dalton and Mr. Tebow might like it, what species of cattail grass is also widely considered an invasive plant Mr. species? Mr. Dalton and Mr. Tebow. Hmm. Um, but Ted knows this. I don't know the answer to this question. Um, Tim Grass. Close, but not quite Timothy Grass. Oh, Timothy was... Grass. Oh. Clue All right. the question. There. Question I the it. sixth <laughs> for Ted. The organic portion of soil compo comprised of partially decomposed plant and animal matter is called what? Uh, the organic layer. Well, I, the answer I have written here is hummus. Is that correct? But uh, not the hummus yeah, that we're that, thinking that's of. Actually okay, what that's I was actually thinking. what it is. So or it's hummus, possibly so. loam, but I. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, Jen. <laughs> question the sixth for you. Soil composed of a relatively even concentration of sand, silt, and clay is called what? Is that loam? That is loam. Okay. That is okay. correct. Yay. All right. As you are planting flower bulbs in your neighborhood, remember that today would have been the 85th birthday of what sweater-clad TV host? She's very tall. <laughs> um. No, she would have turned 90. I know who you're thinking of. She would have been 90-something, mm. I think. 85th? TV host, I, I do not know. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh. Mr. Mr. Rogers? Rogers' birthday today. Oh, 85 years. Happy birthday, oh. Mr. Rogers. Happy Yay, birthday, Mr. Fred. Rogers. All right, Jen. Next question is for you. As you strive to do the right thing when planting your garden this year, remember that today is the 56th birthday of what director of a joint called Do the Right Thing? Step back. Um, that would be Mr. Spike Lee. Mr. Spike Lee is correct. I can't believe he's 56. I can't believe Mars is 56 years old today. That makes me feel old. All right, Ted. If you were growing aubergines in the United Kingdom, what would you be growing here in the United States? Aubergines? Eggplant? Did you just give your husband the answer? No. 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 I heard somebody whisper something. Um, All right. It was but, it was, but yes, it geez. was. Egg, your daughter knows these things. Yes, that is eggplant. That is correct. <laughs> All right, Jen, moving right along. If you were growing coriander in the United Kingdom, what would you be growing here in the United States? Um, is that cilantro? That is correct. Cilantro. But I've <laughs> seen both cilantro and coriander in the stores. Coriander is the seed, seed. actually. Seed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do I get double points for that? Uh, I'll, I'll leave that to our, <laughs> our wise judges in the booth. Ted, <laughs> if an arboretum is a collection of trees, what is a vitaceum a collection of? The collection of grapevines? Vines is correct. Good. Vines is correct. Well done. All right, then. A specific type of arboretum, a quercetum, is a collection of what type of tree? And again, please forgive me for my pronunciation all probably the only Latin I know is the Latin uh, catechism. Well, I'm going to guess, because I know that Quercus is the genus name for oak, that it would be oak trees. Oak trees Ooh. is correct. All right, last question of the first round for you, Ted. <laughs> Not to be confused with the U.S. president sharing his first and middle name, what landscape designer and editor of the Horticulturalist is one of two men often named the father of American landscape architecture? Not Jens Jensen, probably, is it? No, no. We're looking for Andrew mm. Jackson Downing. Oh. oh. Andrew Jackson Downing. ADD was his uh, name when he was a rap star. All right, Jen, last question of this round for you. Influenced by Downing's work, what designer of Central Park and the Niagara Reservation is the oh. other man named the father of American um, landscape architecture? Is, um, I know this. I even had stamps with his name on them. And Ken Burns has probably done um, 50 shows about this guy. It's not Jens Jensen. It's not Frank Lloyd Wright, but it's somebody um, contemporary to them. I can't, I can't think of it. Frederick 
Law Olmsted. Yes. All right, folks, that concludes yeah. round one. Now, the viewers at home or online, this is your chance to play. Give us a call if you know the answer to this question. Call us at 319-338-8456. This week's viewer question is, what plutonium fertilized plant hybrid did Homer Simpson accidentally create on an episode of The Simpsons? If you know that answer, give us a call. We'll be right back with round two. back ladies and gentlemen with round two of the smartest island very special gardening episode here on the first day of spring in iowa city with our guests jen and ted knights and we will now begin round two which is they explained to you you're on the market board so you can ask the same question so which of these three berries is the only one botanically classified as a berry is it a blueberry b <laughs> strawberry or c dingleberry We have an answer. All right, let's take a look at what you got. Turn them around. Ted's got A. Jen has got A. They are, we are actually looking for A. Both of them are <laughs> correct. Strawberries are apparently an aggregate accessory fruits, while dingleberries are something Stop. we're not going to discuss tonight. Long All right. Cats. Question: What is an accessory fruit? Like accessory to them? I mean, I'm thinking of legal terms. I mean, accessory fruit. Like yeah. the smartphone or something. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Next question: What type of flower is most common among the 50? official state flowers in the United States? Is it A, rhododendron, B, rose, or C, violet? Am I the one who thinks rhododendron sounds like a transformer? You both picked B, which is rose, and that is correct. The answer is C. Five states use a type of rose as their state flower. Four have violets, and three have a species of transformer. All right, next. In February 2013, Taylor Farms had to recall bags of what vegetable due to an outbreak of E. coli? Was it A, carrots, B, cauliflower, or C, spinach? All right, Jen's got C, Ted has got C. We're both looking for C, which is correct, spinach. <laughs> the same farmer called spinach in 2011 because of a salmonella scare. Just one more reason, ladies and gentlemen, to get your vegetables local. All right, question the fourth. We're gonna look at some pictures. Which of these flowers seen here are biennial? A, B, or C? Ted's got B, Jen has got C. The answer is B, hollyhocks. 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 Not quite as delicious as ham hocks, but uh, <laughs> that's my opinion. Question the fifth. Name the Hugh Mazelka number one, number one hit heard here. Let's take a listen. Every episode of American Life. All right, let's see what they got. Ted has got C. Jen has got A. It was, in fact, A. Grazing in the grass. Well done, Jen. All right. She knows all the songs. Question six. You are planting sugar snap peas in a row, 100 inches long. Each hole for the individual pea seeds is one inch in diameter, and the holes are two inches apart from each other. How many pea seeds will you need for this row? Coming up next on Gardeners Doing Math. All right, 
let's take a look. Arlo is holding up Ted's thing with 33. Jen is holding her own with 34. The actual answer is, in fact, 34. That question. Nice job. All right, the next question is a spelling question. Spell the oh, following great. flower. Chrysanthemum. Oh, chrysanthemum. It does have half the letters in the alphabet. What if I can't? <laughs> we have some answers. Let's take a look. Uh, Ted has got C H R Y S A N T H E M U M. Jen has got C H Y R Y A N T H E. They both have it correct, ladies and gentlemen. These are the real deal. Uh -huh. All right, next question is going to be a drawing question. Draw a hori hori. <laughs> um. <laughs> Not the kind you see in the ped mall, but oh. something else entirely. Okay. <laughs> Have something. All right, let's take a look. What Ted has got looks like some varicose veins going on. And Jen has got, uh, I don't know, that's some kind of tribal tattoo. What we're looking for is that, actually. It's a gardening oh, knife. Nice. Special kind of gardening knife. Oh. All right, question the ninth, which is last week's winner's question. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm David, winner of last week's Smartest Iowan. And my question for you is, what is the Iowa State bird? Is it A, hawk, B, waxwing, or C, eastern goldfinch? Is it okay that Arlo helped me? Yeah, yeah. All right. any, any, how old are you, Arlo? Okay, yeah. Any, 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 any cheating assistance from somebody below the age of 10? All right. It's completely acceptable. All right, Ted has got C, Jen has got C. They are both correct. We're looking for C, the eastern goldfinch. Thanks, Arlo. Eastern goldfinch. All right, this is the last question of the second round. We're going to show you a little film clip in which gardening goes awry. Name this film. Let's take a look. Feed me Simo. Feed me all night long. Huh? That's right, boy. You can do it. Feed me Simo. Feed me all night long. <laughs> Cause if you feed me see my I can grow up big and strong. <laughs> you eat blood, Audrey, too. Let's face it. Wow, what a high definition clip. I think we downloaded that from an etch a sketch. All right. Ted, we're waiting on you here. No assistance from your son this time. Arlo is not able to not answer to anything. Let's take a look. What does Ted have? Arlo's shop of horrors. Oh, so close. Jen has <laughs> little shop of horrors. That oh. Jen actually has it correct. <laughs> so that concludes the yeah. second round of the Smartest yeah. Iowan. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, for round three. Ladies and gentlemen, with the last and final round of the Smartest Island, very special spring gardening episodes with Jen and Ted Knights, two very knowledgeable and green thumb people here with their lovely kids, Arlo and May. All right, this last round, you might have heard, it's 20 points, so the pressure's on if you're mm -hmm. behind. This is your chance to scoot on up if you're ahead. This is your chance to seal the deal, and it is the Iowa round. So all of the questions have to do with agriculture and gardening right here in the state of Iowa. First question is going to you, Ted. Iowa leads the nation in growing what crop, which is responsible for meals, syrups, and ethanol? I think there's a 
picture of it right down here. Corn. Yes, in fact, it's even a corn. picture right there. It's our logo. It is Yay. corn. All right. Next question is for you, Jeff. Iowa also leads the nation in what crop responsible for milks, sauces, and tofu? What crop? Um, May says it's soybeans. May, you are correct. It is soybeans. Well done. Well done. Good <laughs> job. All right, Ted. All right. What Iowa town shares its name with a shrub from which leaves are used for wreaths, especially by Grecian poets? Shrub with. It's right by Marshalltown. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help me. Um, <laughs> so this is does she backseat drive? Because this is backseat game show. She's telling you what to do here on live television. Oh, it's horrible. I am a helpful spouse. <laughs> yes, I helpful am. Spouse. Good help. Um, <laughs> leaves used for wreaths, especially by Grecian poets. <laughs> I'm stumped. Um, well, Ted, it seems like you may have been resting on your laurel this evening. Because the answer we're looking for is laurel. The only thing I ever think of when I hear the word Grecian is Grecian formula. They used to yeah. have some. That or like a Grecian yeah. skirt steak, which I used to get at diners in Chicago. I'm terribly hungry now. All right. Next question is for you, Jen. What Iowa town shares its name with a genus of flowering plants that, as hardy as some species may be, are not made of steel? Um, let's see. It's not iron weed, which is a plant. And a good movie. Uh, <laughs> um, not made of steel. Oh, um, Magnolia, Magnolia, Iowa? <laughs> Magnolia, that is, and we also would have accepted Clever. Kryptonian rhododendron. <laughs> All right, Ted, during the first weekend of May, you can partake in the tulip time festivities <laughs> in what Iowa town that is truly a window to the world? Uh, Bella. Pella. Also, is it what what affiliation do they have with the windows? Pella windows, I see. They yep. make Pella windows. They're good windows, yep. good windows. All right, Jen. My kid disappeared. Two weeks later, travel to the Tulip Festival in what other Iowa town that really should crossbreed red and yellow flowers more often? Um, let's see. Another Iowa town that really should crossbreed red and yellow <laughs> Don't um, let that small thing distract you behind you. <laughs> well, if it's two weeks later, I'm assuming that you're going to be traveling north, um, or I don't know, um, crossbreed red and yellow flowers more often. Oh. Orange, Iowa. Orange City. Orange City. Are we going to give it to them, judges? Uh, Yay or nay? Uh, yeah, you're going to get it. All right, Jim. Uh, Orange City. All right, second to last question in the final round for you, Ted. What garden center and nursery chain was founded in Shenandoah in 1919? It wasn't for Evergreen. <laughs> that, that's where I work, and that wasn't that long ago. Um, Earl May. Earl May. Earl May is correct. Woo Who is Earl May? That's a, just a guy, and there's a... I don't know. I don't work at Earl May. You know what I like about that is that it's almost Arlo May. Arlo May. If you, you if you just took the E off the beginning and you stuck an O in the middle, you'd have like, the kids' I names. Something else. Like All right, Jen. <laughs> Since 1922, the Meredith Corporation, headquartered in Des Moines, has published what magazine, which is currently the fourth most circular magazine in the United States. Um, bikes and Babes. Wait, no. <laughs> um, better Homes and Gardens. Better Homes and Gardens. That is correct. <laughs> How you feeling, Ted? Last question. Last question of the game for you. 20 points on the line. What section of Western Iowa gets its name from the wind deposited in highly fertile soils that it is comprised from? The Lus Hills. Lus Hills is correct. How much wind is there that's pushing soil around? It's, um, it's a tornado. Glacial, I uh, think. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. All right. Almost 40% of our soil is made up of Lus. Yeah. Really? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to leave out of here more educated than I was when I came in, but uh, that's not terribly difficult. All right, Jen, last question for you. The least, how do you pronounce it, Ted? Lus. The Lus Hills contain some of the last stands of the grass once abundant in what ecosystem that Iowa is a part of? 
last stands of the grass in the prairie ecosystem. Tall grass prairie. Oh. Are we gonna are we gonna give that to them judges? How you feeling in there? Yay, nay? You see a thumb? Oh, oh, it's a nay. Thumbs is down. Oh. All right, that concludes oh. round three. That is the Jeez. end of the game. We're gonna take a very short break and let our judges tabulate the scores, and we'll be right back to let you know who is this week's I think you smartest are. island. <laughs> I feel so, oh, one to ten. Definitely. We only <laughs> have <laughs> one. They <laughs> got away, took all the money. Uh, thanks to That's all not it. <laughs> well, you know, I hope I uh, represent the state fairly well. I've yeah. called it home now for six years. What is the team name this evening? I'm kind of a oh, fan, so it's not fun. So right. this well, I don't care about being smart. I, I just think to beat heaven. I feel real good <laughs> and stupid all at the same time. <laughs> back. We just finished the last round. Our judges are in the booth, tabulating their score. Since it is spring, what do you do? I mean, I know you work with uh, landscaping. Jen's very involved in a lot of stuff. But what do you do? You garden at home? Do you have things that you're looking forward to planting this year? Uh, what uh, What's your plans in the, on the personal green thumb level? Um, probably vegetable garden at home. Small one, though, because by the time I get home after working with plants all day, I'm, uh, you know, ready to not be outside and and, and pulling weeds and watering all night. How about you, Jen? What are you excited for? Yeah, well, I, I love doing the vegetable garden, and it's kind of it does kind of end up being my thing since Ted does gardening all day. Um, but yeah, also tulips will be up soon. Tulips. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. there's so much you know interest here in Iowa City with the farmers market and all the local agriculture we have. Are do you think more and more people are doing the home garden thing and actually uh, putting putting gardens in more than uh, there used to be? Oh yes. Getting easier? Definitely. There's more people doing, um, I mean I see a lot more people coming in and talking about small scale vegetable gardening that they can do because it's it's not difficult if you do if you go about it the right way. Fantastic. Well judges, have you been uh, working in there? Do we have our winners this week? Have you finished the score? Jen has 240 oh. and Ted has 190. Yay. Jen, nice. Congratulations. You are this week. Well, listen, everybody, it's been a fun show. As always, we want to thank our very generous sponsors, the Texas Roadhouse in graphic printing and design. If you, watching at home, would like to be a contestant on the Smartest Island, please send us an email at smartestisland at gmail.com. Arlo, what do you think? Do you root for your dad to win? Or your mom no. won? Are you gonna are you gonna have a change of allegiances now? Are you gonna be surly on the way home? And May, you picked the right team. So everybody else watching at home, uh, yeah. Shoot us an email. We're gonna run some music here. It was short this week. We're so excited, but uh, dance party. Yeah, dance party featuring Arlo and May. So that's it. We have a lot of great shows coming up. You guys wanna dance? And we'll see you next week. There we go.